If you're excited about Ghibli-style photos, but tired of waiting forever for ChatGPT to churn out results, hitting those annoying image limits, or worrying about privacy when uploading personal pics, then you've got to try this tool. You can set it up right on your own computer and whip up thousands of Ghibli-style images in just seconds. All for free. Hey everyone, I'm so Sotai. Lately, the feature that transforms photos into the Ghibli Studio style has been taking the world by storm. It's currently free for all users, which is awesome, but the huge demand means the process can take a while and there's a limit on how many you can do. Plus, uploading your photos brings up some privacy and security concerns. Today, I'm excited to show you how to set up this transformation program right on your own computer. You'll get fast results. No limits on the number of photos, total privacy, and it's all free. No programming knowledge needed. All right, let's dive in. Here's a simple workflow to generate images from text using the Flux model in Comfy UI. If you're not sure how to set up Comfy UI or Flux yet, check out my previous tutorial videos linked here. They'll walk you through everything you need to build this workflow completely for free on your own computer. From this workflow, I'll keep guiding you guys to tweak and build a new workflow that converts image styles into Studio Ghibli's look. So I've got a photo here. The challenge is, how do we feed this photo into the Flux model so it can generate a new version of it in that Ghibli style? The simplest idea to start with is to describe this photo as accurately as possible in the prompt. Throw in the keyword Ghibli style. You can enter it manually, but to speed things up, let me tell you about a cool model called Florence 2. It can automatically whip up spot-on descriptions for any photo we toss its way. To get started, we just need to call the Florence 2 Run node and load the model using the Florence 2 Model Loader. The output of the Florence 2 Run node is a caption, which will feed into the clip text encode node. I'll tweak the input type of this node to make that work smoothly. All right, before connecting the two nodes, I'll toss in the token Ghibli style to the caption output, just like we planned from the start. Just a quick note, I'll make sure to put Ghibli style into text one in the text concatenate node, so it's guaranteed to be the first token in the prompt. Here, I'll also need to pick the detail caption task so the Florence 2 model gives us a nice, detailed description of the input photo. I'm adding a show text node 2, so we can check if Florence 2's description is on point. To keep the output size in proportion with the original image, I'll adjust the input type of the empty latent image node and feed in the image size info using the get image size node. All set now. Let's hit run and wait together to see how it turns out. Here's the prompt we'll feed into Flux. Florence 2 really nailed it with such detailed and accurate results. It describes the clothing, positions, background, even the materials. Super handy for lazy folks like me. Alright, here's the result. Flux generated an output that matches the descriptive prompt we gave it pretty accurately. But, sadly, it's not quite the image we were hoping for. There are two key requirements for our task. The output image needs to have a similar layout to the input photo, while the overall scene should clearly reflect the Ghibli Studio style. The current workflow's output doesn't match the layout, and the style right now feels more like generic anime rather than Ghibli Studio. Now, 
I'll walk you through some techniques to tackle these two issues. Alright, like I mentioned, there are two issues we need to sort out. First, how to make the output image rock that Ghibli style, and second, how to ensure its layout matches the original photo. Let's dive into the first issue together. Here, I'll be using a technique called LoRa, which I talked about in the Flux Comfy UI Secrets video earlier. LoRa lets the Flux model tackle specific train tasks while still keeping the original model's performance solid. For this, I'll load a LoRa called Ghibli so the output images from Flux take on that Ghibli vibe we want. I'll set the strength parameter to 1.3 to get the best outcome. The first issue is sorted. Now, let's move on to the second one. How do we keep the layout of the output image similar to the input photo? Here, I'm going to introduce you to a cool new technique called ControlNet. This method lets you generate images with shapes, layouts, and positions that match a reference photo. We'll use the Apply ControlNet node to bring this model into the image creation process. Of course, we'll also need to load the ControlNet model and hook it up to this node. There are positive and negative inputs here. We'll pop the prompt into the positive input. Since Flux doesn't use negative conditioning, we can throw any condition into the negative input without affecting the result. To keep things quick, I'll just toss the prompt in there too. On top of that, Apply Control Net also needs a VAE model to encode the info, so I'll use the same VAE we've been working with up above and plug it in here. Finally, there's the image part. We won't feed the reference image directly into it, instead, we'll use an intermediate condition like a depth map image, skeleton pose image, or something similar. For this, I'll go with a depth map by loading the depth anything node. I'll tweak the resolution to 1024 to match the flux model. I'll display the depth map here so it's easy to check. Since the workflow is getting a bit complex, I'll place our input image right next to the output image so you can follow along more easily. Now let's hit run and see what we get. Oh, looks like there's some distortion in details like the face or other areas in the output image. That's because the control net model strength is set too high. I'll lower the strength parameter to 0.5 and the end percent to 0.35 to dial back control net's influence during the denoising process. Alright, let's try generating the image again and check out the results. Alright, the quality's definitely gotten better, and the style in the image is now exactly that Ghibli style we wanted. But yeah, you can clearly see the hand pose is still messed up, and the clothing or hairstyle's gone a bit off too. I'll try regenerating it with a different seed value to figure out if this is just randomness at play or something else. Let's click run and wait for the results together. Oh no, the result still hasn't changed. We're still seeing those same issues with the hand, clothing, and hairstyle. Even worse, this time the output strays further from the original image compared to the last generation. The problem here is that ControlNet is only giving us basic info about the overall layout of the reference image, while Flux is still missing more detailed info about specific areas, like finger positions, clothing colors, or hairstyle details. To fix this, I'll introduce you to another technique. But first, I'll group up all the control net related nodes so it's easier for you to follow along. Okay, let me walk you through a technique called Flux Redux. It's a new approach that lets you whip up variations that match the reference image while making sure all those inner details stay perfectly preserved. Here, I'll put it into action by using the Redux Advanced node. 
This node will encode the detailed info from the reference image and feed it into the Flux sampling process. We'll adjust the workflow to load Flux Redux before we bring ControlNet into the mix. Next, I'll load up the input models for the node. First off, we've got the Redux model trained with Flux, no question about it. Then, there's Clip Vision. I'll toss the links to the models and where to place them in the description. Lastly, we'll pop the reference image into the node. To keep everything clear for everyone, I'll group the nodes with the same goals together. The Redux-related nodes, I'll name the texture group, since they're focused on making sure the texture of the output image is on point. Control net nodes I'll call the structure group because they're all about keeping the shapes and positions in the output just right. And the nodes tied to the original prompt will get grouped up too. Alright, let's hit run again and see what we've got. Awesome! The results have improved so much. See that? The image now holds onto nearly all the details from the original photo. Especially the hand pose. It's not messed up anymore. Plus, it's got that Ghibli style we were aiming for, loud and clear. Compared to before we used Flux Redux, the difference is night and day. But let's take a quick step back. I still want the face to look even closer to the reference image, like what ChatGPT pulled off. To make that happen, I'll bring in PooLid, another technique I covered in last week's multiple consistent character tutorial video. Here, I'll load up the necessary nodes and won't go into too much detail to save time. Everyone, feel free to check out the video again for a deep dive into the tips and how to use these nodes if you're not totally clear on them yet. And of course, I'll feed the reference image into the node to bring in the facial details. I'll also group these nodes together and name it the identity group to match its purpose. All right, the optimized workflow is all set. Let's click run and check out the final result. Fantastic! The result is fully optimized now. See that? The character's face in the Ghibli-style image now carries the distinct identity from the photo we fed in. That's what makes this feature so exciting. I'll test it out with a few more images to see if the workflow's running smoothly. Let's try it with a photo of Cristiano Ronaldo here. Looking great, the result still delivers just like I hoped. The facial features make it clear you can still recognize him as Ronaldo, all wrapped up in that artistic, lively Ghibli style. Now, I'll give it a go with a photo of another character, Lionel Messi holding the World Cup trophy.
beyond my expectations. The photo turned out amazing. It's got that true Ghibli vibe, from the soft brush strokes to the nostalgic feel, and you can totally tell it's messy space. Even though the workflow's still optimized, the quality's pretty much on par with what I'd get from ChatGPT. Now I can churn out a ton of images without worrying about limits, and it's all completely free. Alright, so I've walked you through how to set up a workflow in ComfyUI to transform your photos into Ghibli style. I hope you'll check out all the techniques I suggested, so you can make the most of the workflow. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for the latest tutorials on AI models. For now, see you later. Goodbye!